Hello there. Welcome to episode 51 of the Victor Prep Vocab Podcast. To get us in the mood for learning today, first let's start with a quote from Arthur Schopenhauer, who was an amazing German philosopher. Without books, the development of civilization would have been impossible. They are the engines of change, windows on the world. Lighthouses, as the poet said, erected in the sea of time. They are companions, teachers, magicians, bankers of the treasures of the mind. Books are humanity in print. Okay, amazing quote to get us started. Let's just quickly review the words from episode 50. Those were complacent. Complacent. That means willing to please others, being agreeable, willing, cooperative. Yoke. Yoke, that was a thing that attaches a couple of animals together. But yoke also is regarded as something that is oppressive or burdensome. The yoke of capitalism, for example. Lavish, lavish. Oh, and by the way, about yoke. In general, as well as being the thing to attach animals together, or used in a metaphorical sense, it can just mean anything that's attaching something to something else. So... The value of a, the stock market is yoked to the value of the dollar, for example. So if the dollar falls, the stock market value falls too. Lavish, that was our third word. Lavish means sumptuously rich, luxurious, <coughs> luxurious, costly, opulent, or grand. And our fourth word from last time was abyss. An abyss is a bottomless chasm, a huge pit that you can't see the bottom of, so on. So, uh, let's, uh, let's go on to our new words. But actually, before we do the new words, I just wanted to say something about one of the words from episode 49. That was malediction. Now, malediction is often used meaning to mean a, a magical word or a curse, you know, a curse from a witch or a wizard or something. But obviously, it can be used to just mean a regular curse, like someone cursed at you or shouted at you, yelled a curse at you. It doesn't literally have to always be a magical curse from a witch or wizard. But in books and so on, it is often used that way, meaning a curse from a witch or wizard, something like that. Anyway, so let's uh, let's get on to actual new words. So the this is for episode 51. And we're going to start off with cupidity. Cupidity. It's spelled C-U-P-I-D, cupid, I-T-Y, cupidity. So as you might have guessed, this word has something that you may recognize in it, cupid. Cupid, you may recognize the name was a god in Roman mythology, and he was the Roman equivalent of the Greek god Eros. So Cupid, in in Roman mythology, this is, he was the god of desire and affection and love. And the Latin Cupido actually meant desire. So given, given those clues, what do you think Cupid might, cupidity might mean? Well, Cupidity means a greed for money or possessions. So cupidity comes from that meaning of cupido, meaning desire in the Latin. So cupidity means being greedy, covetousness, materialism, and so on. So anyone you meet who's really obsessed with possessions, they're greedy for the next fastest car, the biggest house, more money, that is cupidity. So if you imagine that image of Cupid, the god, firing an arrow into someone and then that person falling in love with something, you can imagine Cupid firing his arrow, hitting someone, and that person then seeing a big pot of money, and then that person only has a strong desire for money and wealth. So that might be a way of remembering what cupidity is. A strong desire or greed for money and possessions. Our second word is digression. Digression. That's spelled 
D I G R E S S I O N. Digression. A digression, because this is a noun, is a temporary departure from the main subject in some speech or writing. So, if you are writing about soccer, and then in the middle of the piece of writing, you talk about some other topic like rugby, and then bre- you, know, you talk about it briefly, and then come back to soccer. That is a digression from your subject of soccer. Some synonyms of digression are deviation, detour, diversion, departure, and divergence. So. Maybe think of a time when you were actually. No, you're probably not going to remember a time when you <laughs> you digressed. <laughs> Just make some, make up some example sentences <laughs> using digression because I'm not sure I can remember a time when I, I digressed either. <laughs> or try and notice when your friends digress. <laughs> anyway, onto our third word, which is opine. Opine. That's spelled O P I N E, opine, and opine is a verb, so to opine, and it's quite simple, but it might be hard to remember. But to opine is to state something as your opinion, so it's almost kind of a formal word. So if you opine something, you're sort of formally stating that is your opinion about something. So. If I'm having a discussion about literature with my friends, that doesn't really happen because I don't often. And most of my friends are not interested in talking about literature. But if I was talking about literature with my friends, I might opine that Tolkien was a much better writer of fantasy than, let's say, J.K. Rowling, who wrote Harry Potter. Now, <laughs> I don't want to start an argument or a debate about this. This is just an example, right? Or I might opine that the best band of the twentieth century was Queen and not the Beatles. Just an example, right? <laughs> I love Queen and the Beatles. So anyway, to opine is to suggest. It's to declare, to comment, to remark, or to put forward. So guys. Keep an ear out. Can you say that? Keep an ear out, or listen when your friends are talking, or listen when your teachers are talking. For when they formally give an opinion about something, and you can think to yourself, they are opining that whatever. Again, opine is something of a formal word. It's not one that's used、uh, in casual or slang speech. It's it's quite formal. And our final word for today is sagacious. Sagacious. This word is spelled S A G A C I O U S. Sagacious. Sagacious means wise. And if you think of another word that begins with S A G, you might think sage. A sage person is a wise, learned person. So, if you know sage, then you can probably think of sagacious. So, it means having good judgment, shrewd, clever, intelligent, knowledgeable, and sagacious. For me, it's the the meaning of it is less about being smart in in the sense that there's someone smart. They could be really good at maths or really good at physics. That that's sort of book smart, or they know all the dates in their history book. But that doesn't, for me, that doesn't really make someone sagacious. Sagacious is more of a good judgment, very shrewd, wise. So someone might be very sagacious in the way they handle people. They might have a very keen understanding of human behavior and be able to predict different events and how people interact. So the way they handle people is extremely sagacious. They they show really good judgment, shrewd, calm, discerning judgment. For me, that's more sagacious. If someone's just really really good at math, 
and however good they're at math, you probably wouldn't call them sagacious. Yeah, maybe, but the meaning of the word, again, is more in the really wise judgment, and often that can come through experience. So often people who are described as sagacious are, are usually older, maybe have more life experience. So take 10 seconds now and think of the person in your life who you think is the most sagacious. So those were our words. Now let's do a quick review. Cupidity, cupidity, that means a greed for money or possessions, materialism, material things. Digression, digression. A digression is a temporary departure from the main subject. And that could be the main subject in a speech or the main subject in writing. You're writing about X and then you have a digression and you talk about Y for a while. Opine, opine. To opine is to state something as your opinion. So you may opine that out of all the cats that you and your friends own, your cat is the most beautiful looking. And our fourth and final word was sagacious. Sagacious meaning showing good mental discernment, showing good judgment, being shrewd, wise, or sensible. And our test sentences. Just listen to each sentence and think about which word I'm referring to. Also, guys, I'm going to start doing something a little bit different. After each sentence, I'm actually going to give you the answer. Um, I mean, I, I realize I never did that before, but one of my one of the listeners <laughs> emailed me and, and gave me that suggestion, and I think it, it makes sense. So here we go. Our maths teacher always used to get distracted when teaching us and would tell us anecdotes about his days as a weatherman for the British Army. That's digression. When discussing music with my sister, I let her know my thought that Pink Floyd were the best British band of the 20th century. That's opine. The owl who lives in the tree outside is supposedly the wisest owl in the world. Other owls fly for weeks to see him and ask his advice. Sagacious. I used to have a mouse that lived in my house who was so insanely greedy I would always find him trying to raid my fridge for whole slices of American cheese. Cupidity. So, a uh, bit of news for you now, guys. I'm going to start doing the podcast every weekday. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I was thinking about the podcasts I listened to, and which ones I liked, and so on, and why I liked them. And I really like the podcasts that have some sort of continuity. I know when they're going to be released, and it's every week, or every weekday, or whatever. So I just decided, okay, whatever happens now, I'm going to try and release a podcast for every weekday. So <laughs> starting now, that's my mission. And part of why I'm explaining that to you guys is that I feel that if I explain that to my listeners, okay, I, Sam, am committing to doing a podcast every weekday, I feel like it puts more pressure <laughs> pressure on me to actually follow through on that. So I, <laughs> I suggest that you guys should email me if I don't do that and give me, uh, <laughs> give me a hard time. So if you want to, to email me, you can do at sam.fold at gmail.com or alternatively sam at victorprep.com. Either one works fine. They both end up going to the same place anyway. Also, I have some kind of exciting new stuff coming up. Um, I'm not going to explain it all right now, but it should be cool and it should really help people who want to learn more. So I'm going to save that news for, t for tomorrow's podcast, but it, it is quite cool and just needs a little bit of preparation on my side. But hopefully a bit later this week, you guys are going to find out what's going on. So... <laughs> On that, on that bombshell, <laughs> well, not quite bombshell, but on that tantalizing almost reveal, I'm going to say goodbye, you guys, and I will speak to you tomorrow. Take it easy. Bye-bye.